Hello and welcome to episode 90. That's right, 90. We've been doing these 90 times now. It's fucking insane. Oh, wait, it's even numbers. That means I'm going to get to do episode 100 as well in the future. Cool. Anyway, so I'm John, I'm hosting, and with me is my buddy Brooks. Brooks, how are we? Isolation. I'm right, mate. Just singing a bit of the old Alter Bridge, I see. Yeah. I'm that insane that you've, you've turned to just singing songs from my favourite band. Yeah, well, I've hardly left my house this week. It's not fun. <laughs> I've left my house a fair few times this week because I've definitely used the whole you get one hour of exercise spiel to use that to walk to the shop. What if my one hour of exercise, I just run in one direction? Do I have to just stay wherever I am at the end of the hour? Can I not move from there until tomorrow? No, because then you'd, I'm guessing you'd still be outside. So you'd have to like be inside when you finish that one hour of run. So that, from that point on, you need to then tell whoever it is that is in that property that they now need to leave yeah. because you can't share. I give them my keys and go, now have your hour of exercise. <laughs> go to my house. Now have your hour of exercise in that direction. <laughs> if you don't make it to my house in an hour... You then need to pass the keys on to someone else, and it's it's just a giant game of musical chairs. This mate, this lockdown thing is getting a bit out of hand. Yeah. Have, have you seen what Dana White is doing? No. What is Dana White doing? Do you you know who Dana White is, right? Uh, CEO of UFC. Yeah. So the guy who does, who runs UFC, he's still running fights. He is organising fights on a private coronavirus-free island. The man uh, is going to have an, a private island where he's going to host fights. Okay. I think Dana White may actually be Shang Tsung. Well, <laughs> it is a bloody sport. <laughs> <laughs> this this is very fucking Mortal Kombat. If if they decide to change the rules where it's there is no submission anymore, it is fight to the death, then we've definitely got ourselves a nice problem. <laughs> uh, it, it made me chuckle reading that Dana White is an absolute nut job yeah yeah I mean you know I, I, it's, it, I think it's got to be that kind of you, you have to be that kind of nutter to run that kind of sport or any kind of combat-y looking sport well yeah I mean you just it's not even just like UFC or any of the MMAs, but like all the fucking boxing promoters are completely batshit insane as well. Yep. Oh, yes. Uh, well, and, you know, my love of wrestling, Vince McMahon. Yeah. Prime example of just pure insanity. Who refused to cancel his biggest uh, event of the year and he said, had it all done with no audience. Some of it pre-recorded. Uh, you more than some of it. Well, and I've not actually, watched any of it yet, so I don't some, some, know. Of, some of the rumours that have come out have been like, if you spoil any of the pre-recorded WrestleMania stuff, then uh, what, that you're going to refilm the match. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I, I mean, like, I, I've not watched WrestleMania yet. I will probably watch it over a couple of days over Easter weekend. Yeah. Oh, I mean, Easter starts tomorrow. They're yeah, true. You know, it's just a. It's more because like, I've got the network for 30 days, so I'll sit and watch a bit of wrestling. But what I don't want to do is just have nothing but wrestling on my TV because everybody in the house, me included, will get fucking sick of it. Yeah. Well, I mean, I. Thankfully for the isolation and quarantine stuff, I've been uh, pretty on the ball with watching the wrestling stuff. So I watched. Saturday night's WrestleMania on Sunday morning, and yeah. then watched Sunday night's WrestleMania Monday morning, and then watched Raw from Monday night on Tuesday morning. Nice. And now I just need to wait for Saturday to roll around, and I'll watch SmackDown. Nice. Or, well, actually, uh, tomorrow morning I should be watching NXT, because I think they are doing NXT TakeOver USA. Which is basically, they because they, couldn't, they didn't do a TakeOver for the day before Wrestlemania because yeah. they couldn't really because of the double double day Wrestlemania so they're running a takeover of essentially just well it's, instead of going around the world or wherever it is they tend to be they're going to do it in the performance center obviously and as it's on I think it's on the USA network that's what they're calling it so Fair enough. 
got a takeover tomorrow night, or tonight rather, I think it is tonight, and it's going to have some interesting matches after what happened at WrestleMania. Nice. And other interesting matches based on some of the people who've obviously been moved or shuffled around a little bit. Yeah. Some, of the, some of the old NXT people have been moved up, and some others have been moved down, I guess. But that's wrestling. Yeah. So, uh, aside from running for an hour in one direction, and now you live in someone else's house, and they've been kicked out, what have you been up to the last since we last spoke on the podcast with Lee two weeks ago? Not not an awful lot, to be honest, mate. No, working. Then working from home, then working. It's, it's been an up and down couple. Of, it, well, it's, it, you're not allowed to do anything, are you? So you're not allowed to go out. There's no fucking cinema watching. There's no, you know, going out to gigs. There's fuck all to do. Because it's Friday. You ain't got no job. You ain't got shit to do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I did do my first ever premiere rental thing. So have you seen these the, the the new release films are going on to VOD for like sixteen quid for two day rentals? Um, I've not seen any that have popped up for me, but I know about them. Okay, so uh, obviously with all the cinemas closing, a lot yeah. of companies are pushing out films directly to VOD uh, as if it was a day and date release. But instead of being like a six quid rental, it's a full price, like fifteen pound rental. It's twenty bucks in the states, it's sixteen quid here. So like day one of the lockdown, you could get, uh, you could rent The Invisible Man, which is fucking amazing. And you know, if you haven't watched it yet, definitely worth the sixteen quid. Uh, the Hunt, which is the same, it's fucking brilliant. Military Wives, which I'm never going to watch. Uh, Emma, <laughs> which I'm never going to watch. And this week, so Monday, uh, and this was the first one I think that has gone direct to VOD without actually hitting a cinema at all. Because all of those previous ones at least had some time in the cinema. Yeah. So, like, Invisible Man and The Hunt I saw uh, at Cineworld. So th- this week, DreamWorks put Trolls World Tour onto VOD rental Sky Premiere thing. Yeah. Uh, so 16 quid to rent for two days. And, yeah, we rented Trolls World Tour because Nikita wanted to watch it. I think I kept seeing that advertised, but wasn't really paying much attention because it's not something that I was going to plan on watching. Uh, I don't like Trolls. I watched the first one because Nikita wanted to watch it, and it, I just can't deal with the weaponized happiness of it all. <coughs> so weaponized I... happiness. <laughs> so I'm not watching Trolls World Tour. As much as Maya and Nikita both said it was quite good, I will not watch it. But, yeah. Apart from that, mate, all is good. Oh, I got a speeding fine. Did I tell you this? How do you get a speeding fine when we're in lockdown? Well, I got it before the lockdown. All right, then. That's fine. <laughs> how, what did you... How, where? When? How? Uh, so, I... For those that don't know, I work, like, six miles away from my house. Uh, and I drive a big fucking diesel car. Those two things do not go well together. Nah. Ever. Uh, so usually, you know, if I'm, if I'm traveling to see people, you know, once or twice a month, I'll drive up to Derby to see my mate, or even just up to Northampton to see my parents or something, you know. it's uh, So my car gets a bit of a run. Well, I've been so busy at work and so not busy in all other times. I've actually not done any other traveling. So my, uh, uh, my, my uh, DPM started getting clogged up. You can feel it when you first start, uh, start the motor. So, right, well, I need to clear this out and, you know, shit's going down. I've got my service and MOT in a couple of weeks. I don't anymore. So, oh, fuck, I need to... You know what? I'll leave the house a bit early, get myself into the A5. I'll bang up and down the A5 a couple of times, put my foot down a bit, blow it all out. I, I think I've had to do that. I've had the car three years. I think I've had to do that once before because I'm usually going somewhere and it's not a problem. So I bang down the A5, no worries, get to the roundabout, turn around, come back. I'm doing 95 as I come around the corner, and the fucking speed trap van's on the bridge just around the corner, and there there was no chance. Well, I tapped my brake as I saw him, and after I slowed down, I looked at my speed, I thought, fuck, I'm doing 90-something miles an hour, shit. 
If he's fucking caught me before I've tapped my brake, I have 100% lost my license. Oh, yeah. Fuck. Fuck, fuck, fuck. So I'm going to have to go and get a bike so I can bike the six miles to work. Bollocks. <laughs> uh, the notice came through a couple of days ago. Or a few days ago. It caught me doing 87. So... <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's quite lucky, I guess. Yes, yeah, so I haven't lost my license yet. Maybe uh, you've got a nice six points on your license. Yes, I do. <laughs> I don't suppose uh, you were allowed to do the uh, mark special of uh, doing a speed awareness course. Uh, no, because the threshold for a seventy mile an hour road is eighty six miles an hour. Oh, that's just mean. <laughs> Shit happens. Yeah, I, 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 shit happens. What am I going to do? I'm, there's no point in fighting it. There's a picture of my car doing 87, 87 miles an hour. Uh, just pretend it wasn't your car. Yeah. Just say you don't you don't drive a, that car. The uh, the you know you've got a black one or something. So I got this great. Uh, there's an awesome letter that comes with it. Have you ever been done for speeding? Uh, never through post. Alright. So you get this awesome letter that comes to it. It lists, on one page, it lists, here are the reasons you are not allowed to speed. And it's like, the road was clear. It was late at night. I was in a rush. I couldn't see the speed camera. <laughs> I like, Brilliant. I wouldn't say any of those things. I had diarrhea. Yeah. Needed to find a John. <laughs> Yeah. Actually, I think you can use my passenger had diarrhea. But... <laughs> can I use that when I'm caught on camera kicking my passenger out of the car at 87 miles an hour? <laughs> and barreling down the A5 on their own, almost as fast as I'm going. So my passenger had diarrhea, so I drove quickly to get to the nearest toilet. Yeah. But yeah, that's that's how interesting my last couple of weeks has been, mate. The the most interesting thing that happened was you got a speeding ticket. Pretty much. Genius. Yeah. Was a rule, I don't get caught speeding. I don't really speed that much. I'm quite a careful driver. But, yeah. Shit happens. How about you, mate? How's your couple, last couple of weeks been? Uh, so, I've not been caught speeding, funnily enough. That's good. That's because you haven't been anywhere. Yeah. And that has really played with me a lot the whole not going anywhere it's like normally I'm not the sort of person who does just go out for the sake of going out but now that I can't I really want to fucking go out I think everybody's like that literally everybody we went out the other day took the dog for a walk and I think every family on the estate were out I was like you people have never been outside you're all so pale (laughs) you've never seen the outside ever It's it's a proper like you're not allowed to go outside, but you get one hour of exercise a week, so everyone fucking synchronizes their watch. Yep. We're all going to fucking go out at 4 p.m. It's literally, it's like, you know, don't push the red button. Now everybody wants to push that red button. They didn't want to before, because they didn't know it was there. Fuckers. Sorry, go on. Yeah, so uh, I've been, well, walking to the nearest shop, which is about two-ish miles away from me. Nice. So, well, actually, no, it's not the nearest shop. The nearest shop's much, much less than that, but it's like, do I want to walk for 15 minutes to the nearest shop, or do I want to do the 30-minute walk to the other nearest shop? Well, slightly less than 30 minutes, because can, I can get there around it, buy whatever it is I need to, and back again in about 45 minutes, whereas walking to Melrose is about 30 minutes total getting there and yeah. Shopping and back again. So I go for the slightly further walk, which is also uphill on the way and downhill back, whereas Melrose is downhill there and uphill back. Yeah. So overall, it's it's the better choice to go to the cult. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, been utilizing that and been doing some yoga just because I'm at home and might as well fucking do something with the hey, why not? copious amounts of YouTube uh, exercise programs that you can pick up. You mean you're not doing Joe Wicks PE every morning? 
I know there's lots of people that are doing that every morning, but no, I'm not doing that. that Nikita's doing it every morning as well. Yeah. Well, I what... by that I mean Maya's doing it every morning and Nikita's moaning about it. What, because she can't do it or because that Cause she's... Because she, she fucking won't. Okay. <laughs> Just a kid. Yeah. Kids are born to moan. They are. Sadly, that is very true. Uh, what else? Um, and I have played a lot of video games, which is useful for somebody who works, does a video games podcast. True. <laughs> is that the um, bare minimum that we expect? Not that I hit that bare minimum very often. No, you're right. You don't hit it very often. In, <laughs> in, in fact, I think we should change the bare minimum to you've mentioned or seen a news article about a video game. Yeah. This is the Character Unlock ask. podcast where a host wants to play a game, <laughs> but never does. So, yeah, that's that's me for what I've kind of been up to in the last isolation days. And this this shit needs to end soon. Like, it won't. I don't. I can't handle another five weeks of this. Yeah, it's uh, it is tough. It is tough. My my mental health can't deal with being cooped up. I was saying this to the wife, and it, it, it's weird as well because you you kind of I say to the other half, I'm like, I don't want to just be stuck in the house. Like I'm I'm going to work next week. I'm like, I can't fucking wait to go to work. And it's like I don't want to get away from you. I want to get away from this fucking house. I want, yeah. <laughs> I want to get away from the same four walls I've been staring at for a week. You know, I'm, I just. It's because it's not voluntary, and I, you know, what I mean, it's and everybody's yeah. in the same boat. Because I can quite happily take a week off of work, sit and fart into the same sofa cushion for six days and do nothing but watch shit TV and play video games and be happy. But the fact that I'm being forced to stay in my house, hundred <laughs> percent, totally agree with you. Like, I've gladly taken time off work, sat and played video games for God knows how long, but I'm sat. In the sofa, I've got my laptop on in front of me. I've got the TV on to the side of me. And I'm doing one thing, watching YouTube videos about stuff on the TV. Yeah. Or I've got a film on while I'm doing some stuff. Or I'm playing a game and I've got a film on occasionally as well. Yeah. Like yesterday I was playing Two Point Hospital on my laptop. And I had the Star Wars Rogue One on the TV. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Because Disney Plus. I say getting um, that Disney Plus subscription working for you. Yeah. So I was just sat there doing that, and the day just disappeared away from me. And it's like, next thing I know, it's like, uh, my sister had finished working from home, and she was like, cooking dinner. I was like, it's only like two o'clock in the afternoon. No, it was like half five. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, the day disappeared away from me playing it, doing it. Today, however, same playing two point on my laptop, the day drug a lot. Yeah. I, and I was just constantly looking at my watch, trying to work out when it's going to be recording time. And it just was not getting quicker. It just was not arriving. You literally should just text me and go, can we record during the day? Maybe. I, did, I, was, at, I was at home. You know, I was working, but I was at home. I quite happily would have just set it aside for a couple of hours and set up the mic. Would have taken five minutes. Yeah, it didn't occur to me. Maybe next episode. Yeah. <laughs> Although, I suppose in theory the next episode should technically have Lee on it. Uh, yes. Hopefully. Because we, we, we'll, we'll be playing Doom for the next episode. Uh, fucking hope so. Well, you said one way or the other. Yeah. I will be playing Doom. You'll be playing Doom. Which is going to be an annoyance, and I'll explain that. I'll explain why when we get to what we've been playing. But, uh, yeah, I desperately want to get on and play Doom. I suppose I should probably stick it in my Xbox and install it, seeing as I've got the disc waiting for it. <laughs> you said I've, any... got, I've got Resident Evil 3 sat from Boomerang on my shelf. I've got Final Fantasy on the way. I'm like, fuck, am I going to have time to play all these games, man? Yeah. I mean, I was flicking through the Boomerang list when you mentioned that Final Fantasy was on the way, and I was like, ah, oh, I wonder what I can get out of Boomerang. Took a look, new releases. There really isn't anything. Yeah, fuck all. So, and we've got as we'll find out in the news, a lot of games aren't going to be coming. Yeah, shitload being delayed. Well, at least one big one being delayed indefinitely. 
you kind of you you can't if a game hasn't gone golden and it's in crunch time, you can't exactly finish that crunch with the uh, with the, with the situation we're in now. Well, I think so. I mean, obviously, we're we're talking about uh, the Last of Us Part Two. So, Last of Us Part Two, uh, they announced last week that it's been delayed. The release of it has been delayed indefinitely. I don't think it's a finished the game issue because for the most part I would guess that the the dev and the QA and all that kind of stuff can be done remotely yeah Uh, I think and I haven't looked too much into it I've I've been quite busy so I've not (laughs) not actually had that much time to look at it but I I think the, the bigger issue is going to be a logistical issue so as we get further and further into this lockdown, the idea of shipping millions sh- of copies yeah. of video games out to the world. But this, exactly that. So you can you can be shipping games out now, which is why people are getting their Final Fantasy VII's now, and they would have been shipped a couple of weeks back, you know, as all this was happening. But now, the further we get in, the more likely it's going to be we're actually haulage company is going to be told, well, no. You're not allowed to it's, drop off a yeah. shitload of games to Dixon's because, you know, you're just not. <laughs> yeah, there's no there's no point shipping, uh, like, a crate or a load of a pallet of video games to Tesco no. when Tesco probably won't be selling them. No. Or any of those shops that are currently closed. Yeah. And more importantly... The haulage companies that are going to be allowed to do things like that, it's going to be non-essential work. So they're going to be charging through the nose to do that, which is going to affect directly affect everyone's bottom line. Yeah. It's just not it's not worth it. I'm, I honestly think that's where the problem lies. I don't think it's going to be a, a crunch or a need to get the game finished issue. Because I'm pretty sure Neil Druckmann... Is it Neil Druckmann? The director of uh, sure. uh, Naughty Dog? said the game's finished. Which obviously ended up in a lot of entitled frustration. Not entitled frustration. Frustration from entitled dicks going, well, the then just release finished. it digitally. Well, I don't want my fucking The Last of Us digital. I want a physical yeah, copy. Yeah, I mean, what, what, what are they going to do? Say, oh, everyone who's bought the uh, physical version, you're going to have to wait to get the digital one. Or take a picture of your receipt. And we will send you a digital one. Well, and then I do also think there's going to be, uh, especially for a game like The Last of Us, I think it's a very because it's story based. For a lot of people, it's a it's a one time only thing. So actually, if you release it digitally and not physically, saying oh we'll release your physical one later, people like me who have done a physical release will wait. And then you'll end up with quite a high percentage of people. Obviously, this is me just guessing. I reckon you'll end up with quite a high percentage of people just watching Let's Plays on YouTube. Yeah. Assuming a Let's Plays done well, you know, you know, done properly, you wouldn't need to play The Last of Us after that. It's not where well, it possibly is a twisty, turny game, but it's a one-time deal. You know, and if you can do that and save. You know, your sixty quid or whatever you're spending on the game. Yeah, just, that's just my guess. You know, yeah. and as much as these people are, you know, a game developers, Sony, are, they're a business. They're there to make money, and if they're going to lose money by not being able to ship a game physically, then they're not going to, they're not going to release it at all. Fucking try and tell me that you're not going to buy The Last of Us Two when it comes out in six months' time instead of in a month. Yeah, you know, everybody will. Well, depending on what the state of the PlayStation Five is going to be like. Nah, because it'll be completely backwards compatible, especially with PlayStation Four. Is it? Is that confirmed? <laughs> they would be shooting themselves quite badly in the foot if it wasn't. And yet, I, th- I think at this point it's kind of a given that it is. Yeah. But the problem is, is that until they do officially announce it, it's people are just going on the assumption, and then it's like they could easily turn around and say, "Oh, yeah, it's not 
but we can make it so in like a couple of months. It's like backwards compatibility in six months. Or they'll try and shove PlayStation Now down your throat a bit more. Sony clarifies that PS5 will support overwhelming majority of PS4 games. Overwhelming majority. Wow. I don't know what that means. I mean, I'm guessing that they can't test all of the games. No. And like, you would expect that a game that comes out after the announcement of the PlayStation 5 would almost certainly be backwards compatible. Yeah. I mean, it's like um, all of the announcements regarding the Series X have been, like, it's not it's not all games, but it's like we've tested, like, hundreds of thousands of video games that are currently yeah. playable on Xbox One, and they all work on Series X. Yeah. It's like you've tested hundreds of thousands of games. Obviously, the hundreds of thousands of games could well be almost all of them, but there's probably going to be a couple on the list that you've not tested and probably won't test because yeah. you just don't quite see the benefit. Like, no. why would you test something like FIFA 12? Well, or any any FIFA game prior to 16? Because if yeah. you're going out and buying a Series X, you're probably not going to have a FIFA game that's four years old. I'll be honest, if I was going to play a FIFA game, it'd probably be FIFA 12, because I can get it for about 10p in game. <laughs> or at I could buy Madden's, 20 of them for a pound in game, I'm almost sure of it. If you have EA Access, you can probably just download it for free anyway. <laughs> that's, a, that's a big waste of EA Access for 15 quid for the year. Yeah. <laughs> So spend fifteen pounds playing that, my FIFA friend, games. Is why I don't have EA access anymore. Yeah, well, there's almost nothing on it. No. If they if they'd made EA access like the Origin access, Ultimate, whatever the fuck it was called, and you get the top edition of whatever EA title yeah. or Wii, then yes, maybe it would have been worth it. But currently, not so much. Not even saving ten percent on digital purchases. No. Especially when it doesn't Game Pass give you a discount anyway. I think it does, yeah. Whatever. Um, did we did we want to talk then about now I've done just done that whole kind of explanation as to why The Last of Us Two has been delayed. Yeah. Would we like to talk about the announcement that's going to shit all over that explanation of mine? Go on then. So Do it. Volition and Deep Silver have said they're going to release. Saints Row 3 Remastered. Yes, they did. On the 22nd of May. <coughs> so, like, in six weeks' time. When we could quite easily still be in the middle of a lockdown. Oh, yeah, definitely. So even though I've said that it's not worth anybody sending out Cratefuls of Games to people, I have just pre-ordered... Saints Row 3 Remastered from game. Yeah, I mean... (laughs) (laughs) Let's be fair, they are completely different companies, and one of them is all about doing completely batshit insane things for the sake of doing it. Oh, yeah. Uh, It it made me laugh. Because I literally, I'd put all this thing together because I knew we were going to talk about The Last of Us 2, so I was like... This is probably why. And, I, and then as I'm re- thinking about it, it's like, oh look, Saints Row 3 remastered. Oh, 34 quid. Oh, I'll pre-order that. 25th of May, I'm going to get a physical copy apparently. I don't know how it's going to work. Honestly, don't. No idea. I don't, if it, I don't care if it's delayed. I've got plenty of other games to play, but I can't wait to play Saints Row 3 remastered. I fucking love Saints Row 3. And it will definitely lead into a replay of Saints Row 4. Well, I mean, you... I, I don't really know... I don't know enough about... I don't think I actually finished Saints Row 3, to be honest. What? It's awesome. Did I finish Saints Row 3? Uh-huh. Yes, I did I did finish Saints Row 3. I also just, only just finished Saints Row 4, because I got... I think I got most of the way and then it, the game stopped working on the disc that I had and then I just couldn't be bothered to carry on playing it. So I remember the end of Saints Row 3, like the la- one of the last missions you do, got so hectic on the screen. So you got to remember it was a PS3 game and I played it on the PS3. It got so hectic on the screen that it dropped down to about two frames a second. 
it was completely fucking unplayable. And once all the violence and the, the, the craziness stopped, it went back to 30, or tried to go to 30. I don't think it ever hit 30. Saints Row was not a well-optimized game. Uh, but it was something you could recreate every time. You could go, oh, there's a tank. I'm going to just start fucking shit up. And the second more than two or three people are on the screen trying to kill you, the whole game just crashes to a horrible halt. So I'm quite looking forward to recreating that in beautiful 4K. Well, yeah, that's... Uh... <laughs> well, I mean, let's be fair, the the Switch remaster, lack of a better term, was not very well optimised. Uh, no, I don't, I don't remember. I'd never played it, but I did hear very bad things. Um, but I planned them 3 and 4 on the PS3. I believe it. Uh, so I will probably go back. I'll probably platinum them. I might try and 100% three. I'll go back and play four again. So I've got four re-elected. I think I bought Saints Row 4 re-elected and Get Out of Hell on PS4 and Xbox One. Because I was on my PlayStation the other day and I saw Get Out of Hell for download. So okay. When did I buy that? And I've got <laughs> trophies for it. I checked. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so that I may... Uh, I might do three and four, and maybe get out of hell, just because why not? I uh, I don't think I played Get Out of Hell. It was not the best. It was worth it for the comedy, uh, and it was quite mercifully short. But it did try very very hard to force the jokes and force the Johnny Gatness. So, uh, I mean, a large portion of four was very Johnny Gat heavy. Oh yeah, just, but, but just because four was so crazy, four was so just bananas about everything. Everything about it was turned up to eleven, so it all just kind of fit. And I don't, I never got to a point where I hated playing four. Uh, I didn't really get out of hell, but by the time we got to the end of it, it was wearing thin on my nerves. I was like, oh, this is getting a bit fucking daft. So we'll see, but. Saints Row 3, mate, I'm super excited to play it again. Because uh, I know Volition are currently making Saints Row 5. So. Yeah. Bring it Honestly, I, I can't really remember enough about Saints Row 3 to get excited for it. Because I don't... I, apart from the... The Twins... There's a bloody tiger in my car. And that? <laughs> it's not really a lot. Oh, and Matt Miller. Yeah. And the big guy. Oh, yeah. like, like, I remember some of the like content to it, but overall, I don't remember enough about it to be excited. Yeah. It was the one where you were... Uh... Because in 4, you're the president, aren't you? Do you remember? Yeah. So it's before you're the president, but you are the, you're the leader of the saints who have just basically turned themselves into a giant brand. Like it's basically like Death Row Records not really being badass anymore, just being a fucking logo. Uh, and then you try and be badasses again. It's a, it's a very... I really enjoyed Saints Row 3. Uh... But I get excited for Saints Row the way other people get excited for Grand Theft Auto. So, yeah, Saints Row is 100% my jam. And for 35 quid, yeah. I'm I'm not even going to... I won't even sniff it. I'll go, yeah, fuck it. Take my money. It's got all the DLC, all the add-ons, everything. Bring it on. Yeah, I mean, I, I could understand you. (laughs) <laughs> going after it like that but so. it's got co-op dude <laughs> it does have co-op only uh, only, only two player co-op though yeah so. oh, it is only two player co-op but Saints Row 3 only ever had only two player co-op I don't think it had any co-op at all in 4 which was a real shame no, I'm pretty sure 4 had co-op I can't remember honestly don't remember I don't think I play co-op on any of them. 
I think Saints Row 4's um, uh, but, but Saints Row 4 co-op's actually quite fun. Mainly because you can do that jump from really high up and nuke the ground. Yeah. And it, it fucks the screen for the uh, other person as well. Nice. Just the way it should be. I like it. Exactly. Why would you not want to fuck with your teammate? <laughs> I can't remember what other news was there. Can't really have been anything uh, anything to remember. Oh, Modern Warfare. Mate, Modern Warfare 2 got a remaster. Yes, it did. What the fuck? Like, like the, all the bells and whistles in the world of just, like, random leak of a... some kind of Korean eShop on the PlayStation Store yeah. saying Modern Warfare 2 Remaster available to buy for like 20 quid. And then in-game on Modern Warfare, it just sort of showed up in the store. Buy Modern Warfare 2 Remaster, uh, campaign remaster, sorry, and get some bonus content yeah. for the Modern Warfare current version of multiplayer stuff. So there's that. Uh, so I've bought it, only then to find out that it's been made PlayStation exclusive for a month. Yeah. So the fact that I could buy it a month early and I can't actually play it. So How it's much kind it of cost uh, you? twenty quid. Twenty quid to replay the campaign in glorious remaster. I I think that's one hundred percent worth it. I really I love Modern Warfare too. I don't uh, know whether it's going to have a physical. Well, see, I don't have. A f- I've only got a digital copy of Modern Warfare Remastered. I wouldn't mind. See, are we going to get a Modern Warfare Three Remastered at some point? Uh, this is now my question because I really liked Modern Warfare Three as well. I know other people didn't, but I really did. Uh, I I would quite fancy a uh, remastered trilogy replay. Maybe even squeezing in the new one in first, just cause. Like I've got fucking time to do any of this, but this is what I would like to do. Um, who knows? Have you finished Modern Warfare yet? What the story? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, definitely. I'm, yeah, I have finished the story. Sorry, you just got me second guessing myself then. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I I do I did like the Modern Warfare remake restory yeah um, and I don't really remember much of Modern Warfare 1 but I loved Modern Warfare 2 both story and um, multiplayer. Uh, multiplayer yeah and the fact that this is purely story is great but there's a lot of people who aren't happy with the fact that it's um, only story. But there's a current Modern Warfare out with a fully-fledged multiplayer, yeah. including a massive free fucking add-on for it. Jesus Christ! If you want to play modern, if you want to play Call of Duty multiplayer, go play that. Or yeah. whack on your current copy of Modern Warfare 2. If you love it that much, you've still got Modern Warfare 2. Put that on. Yep. So I played a bit of Modern Warfare 2 from the classic on the Xbox. Yeah. Uh, because it's backwards compatible. Yep. So I played it, and it's really fucking difficult to get a game. Uh, but the other side of it is, is that, okay, yes, I guess maybe they can, because that's what they've been doing so far, is they've been kind of half re-releasing the uh, games, uh, the, the maps back again. Yeah. So it's good to see that it's going to be the, just the story, including the no Russian bit, obviously. Yeah. Not that that's the only thing I'm excited for. Uh, but as an aside to it, all of that multiplayer goodness can slowly be thrown into the multiplayer of the current game and probably will. Uh, this is what I mean. Why would you 
one, why why would Activision split their player base across two different games? You know, why would they then have people working on balancing, updating, whatever Modern Warfare 2 remastered and the new Modern Warfare multiplayer? People just find any reason to fucking moan. Yes. Because they're assholes. All of them. Because I guarantee you, if they'd have released Modern Warfare 2 Remastered with the Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer, they'd have gone, oh, why bother doing that? Now you're splitting the player base because they've already got Modern Warfare like 2019. <laughs> Cunts. <laughs> All of them. All of them. Oh, mate, I fucking hate people. Yes. I hate people at the best of times, but you know what? This last couple of weeks has made me really fucking hate people. Yeah. Fucking hate people. People are cunts. People are dicks. Everything about people is bad. Dude, I had, uh, to, I had to go shopping on Monday. You should have fucking seen me in Tesco's. I've never had to yell at so many people in my fucking life. Why and are you I, yelling? And I was, compl- I, mate, I was unbiased. I, I yelled at everybody. Blokes, women, women children. Old, young. Just because people up my ass. Like, my local Tesco's... They've, that, and I think Tesco, oh, they've put yeah they've put little tape down and like uh, one way systems and all sorts yeah. of. So Tesco's have actually put out, have actually you know had made a bunch of fucking arrows that they stuck on the floor. Like my local ASDA is just done in mask, it's done in black tape, but yeah. they've actually got proper Tesco branded arrows showing you the fucking one way system, and there's and each aisle is blocked. Like there's lines marking off two meters distance. So essentially, yep. each person has their own little block, and then you move on. And everybody is told how it works when they walk in. You know, don't don't overtake people. Don't overtake people. Stay two meters away. Follow the one-way system. I must have yelled at ten people, mate. You're going the wrong fucking way. Oh, I didn't know. Didn't see the arrows. Fuck off. By the end of it, I'm just going. Don't fucking lie. Just go the other fucking way, <laughs> mate. I was losing my temper on a big scale. All right, this isn't hard. This isn't a difficult... I understand that we all need to get our shopping and we all need to do this as quick as possible, but it's so much quicker and so much easier for everybody if you're not a cunt about it. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> this one fucking... Mate, all I saw coming up behind me was trolley as I was I was up the uh, medicine aisle getting some aspirin and the trolley came up and... I saw the trolley and I was like, you, I turned around, you've got to not be right up my ass." It was like this old granny. <laughs> I did not for one second feel guilty. Not no, for, and, not, you, and you shouldn't. Because she was like, oh, 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 I was like, no, just fuck off. Like, I was properly rude to everybody. And I don't do rude in general. You know, I'm, I'm crass and I'm loud and I'm pretty fucking obnoxious sometimes, but I'm not rude to anybody. <laughs> but I was nah. rude to fucking everyone on Monday. Absolutely everybody. And you fucking should be. And I'd, everyone should be. If... Mate, I had one guy, he was walking the wrong way, and I clocked him a couple of times walking the wrong way with his wife and kid. Another thing that we've been told not to fucking do, like go shopping yep. on your own. Yes. You know? He's like, and the, the, something like the third or fourth time I saw, I went, mate, you're following the arrows the wrong way. You're making everybody get out of your way. Will you please follow the one-way system? It's like, I can't, mate. My wife's disabled. So, like, mate, I don't give a fuck how disabled your wife is. I've just walked past somebody in a wheelchair. Go the right fucking way. So I can't. My wife's disabled. And? <laughs> I, I just, mate, I'm hating just... it. I hate it. This... This lockdown is bringing out the worst in everybody, but it's go- I'm going to end up punching somebody in the middle of fucking Asda. Do it. Punch everyone. Cause Punch I can't, all the things. I just can't be dealing with the fucking self-centeredness of it. You know? Same as these cunts that think it's okay to go to the poxy beach. No! Go home! I know you don't want to be in your house. No one wants to be in their house. The quicker you go home, and the quicker you stay the fuck inside your building, the easier this is going to be on all of us. Fuck off. Anyways, sorry, mate. That's my rant. It made mate. I've been so angry the last few days. You, your uh, description of this just like reminded me of something. I'm now sending you a YouTube video. I'm scared. <laughs>
I'm really scared. So, so this is uh, this this is exactly what you need to be like in life. Uh, but carrying on, uh, <laughs> as 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 we can't really show these people this lovely video that no. I'm now sending to you. I will. I'll watch that later. Um, we are now in need of moving on to because we're no longer talking about news now that we've moved off of the last bit of news and you decided to start punching everybody in the world oh, people, oh, people need to fuck off um, let's go with what we've been playing so Brooks how many games have you played uh, two and a bit two and a bit I will agree I probably will say the same of two and a bit or rather I've it's not 100% accurate. I've played three. However, it's a bit pointless to talk about one of them, seeing as it's a game that we've already talked about on the show beforehand. So, as is kind of another one. So, it's mine's really just two, but it's split into three games, in okay. theory. Okay. That's a long well, way of just... Uh, welcome of, like, to uh, maths for the fucking insane. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, isolation maths is the one. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, I'll let you lead the way okay so what's my, your number one my number one so i let's do it this way i replayed the last of us yes from cool. start to finish uh on easy because all i wanted to do was replay the story uh and some of that game is really fucking hard uh i'm not gonna bang on about it for fucking ages because everybody has played the last of us but obviously, it's it's a, it's a post-apocalyptic survival horror, um, which does take the survival horror thing to a quite a new level. Even on easy, you do feel the fucking itch quite a bit. Uh, always counting your your rounds, always making sure you have got enough shivs and all that kind of nonsense. It it is a very on your on the edge of your seat kind of game. Uh, I tell you what, though, I would still call it a fucking masterpiece. I think I've played this game four times now. So I think twice on the PS3, and now twice on the PS4. Every time I play it, that fucking opening scene gets me. Uh, for those, and, and as it fucking should. Yeah, for the three people that haven't played The Last of Us, I'm not going to ruin it, just go and fucking play it. For everybody else, they know exactly what I'm talking about, and you're all crying already just thinking about it. Because you damn well should be. It's fucking horrendous. I don't even have kids. I <laughs> father, but it's still... <laughs> that fucking cuts deep. It does. It's quite horrendous. So... <clears throat> but I really I really appreciate playing the game through again and, and, you know, creating your... You know, being thrust into a relationship with Ellie and having to look after for this, you know... What you're with her for about ten hours, I suppose. A couple of hours of that, you're playing as as Ellie, which is really tense, uh, and you do kind of feel thrown into it, like you're like you're uh, you're not prepared to be doing this. Like she's not; she's a kid. She's not prepared for this shit. Uh, I, I but because I was because I dropped it down to easy, and I was I wasn't paying much attention to what was going on previously maybe or maybe i just forgot but it was it was weirdly harrowing to kind of be walking around with her going oh, I've, I've never seen the sky before i've never been this close to a building and suddenly you realize you know this kid's not even a teenager and you're playing the game 20 years after the fucking apocalypse has happened so she's been born into this yeah and it's just you know wow i, I haven't played the dlc yet uh, and I never have, so I will definitely do that before the new game comes out. This was kind of the, the point, because obviously, until three days ago, we were expecting The Last of Us 2 to come out next month. And I thought, I don't need to, but while I'm waiting for my Doom account to be fixed, I want to play uh, The Last of Us. You know, Remind myself of the game, remind myself of the story... Remind myself of some of the weird things that happen in the game to see if they break the same shit in The Last of Us 2. I'm guessing probably not. Things like your AI can just your AI partner can just run around and make a noise and no one pays attention to them. 
kind of stupid nonsense while I'm hiding shit in myself that if I move someone's going to see me yeah uh, so yeah so I haven't played the Left Behind DLC yet so I will get to that uh, before The Last of Us 2 comes out but there's, obviously there's less of a rush to do that now and I wanted to play other games uh, but yeah I replayed The Last of Us mate and it's it's still a masterpiece still one of the best games one of the best stories I've ever played uh I can't wait for number two. It's just, yeah, I I got to the end, and it, like I was the first three times I played it, I was speechless. I was emotional. It was just, it was fucking great. I genuinely hope The Last of Us Two lives up to to what The Last of Us One did. Yeah, uh, I mean. I don't know when I'm going to get around to playing The Last of Us 2, seeing as I don't know when the game's going to come out for one. And two, I don't have the ability to play the, the, the it. It'll be currently. somewhere around after I play The Last of Us 2, because then I will unplug my PlayStation and drive it around to your house. <laughs> uh, along with my Last of Us 2 and my God of War. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, um... Uh, yes I really want to play The Last of Us 2 and because I did love The Last of Us 1 it's a console purchasing game and it was a console fucking purchasing game because <laughs> how, how many fucking Playstations were sold after the, on the hype of The Last of Us Yeah. oh so very many the Playstation 3 got a second life essentially out of that game Yeah. so it getting a remaster or two Onto the four, so maybe at some point I will end up with a PlayStation Five. I say as maybe, I uh, guaranteed I will end up buying a fucking PlayStation Five for whatever goddamn reason it happens to be. Well, that depends because Lee spoke uh, messaged us the other day, didn't he? Going, oh, possible leaked price for the PlayStation Five, eight hundred pounds. Is that nope? Just nope. Not in a million fucking years. I mean, for a hobby I struggle to find time to play anyway, I will I will find it difficult to justify to my wife going, I'm off down to game to spend £500 on a new console. If that console turns out to also be £800, it will never, ever, ever happen. Mm, yeah, you're, you're right on that. <laughs> I don't think that price is right. Uh, I don't. I don't. I think... I think Sony would crumble as a gaming division selling an £800 console. They could barely survive selling a £600 console when the PS3 came out. Uh, yeah, that thing needed to drop in price fast. Yeah, it and did. I think, I think that was the reason to why they managed to get away so easily with the, the PlayStation 4, because they priced it in respectable price compared to the Xbox One. Yeah. To start with. I don't think eight hundred pounds is a realistic number. Uh, it might be eight hundred pounds per unit for them to make it, and they're going to have to severely hamper themselves. The only, like it, the only time my stance on this changes is if that eight hundred pound console includes VR three point oh. If it comes with the with a VR headset and a new one to come with the PS5, 800 quid for console and VR, then I can just about justify spending that kind of money. Well, yeah, I mean, if it's 800 pounds but it comes with a VR, that instantly makes it a 600 pound console. Yeah. Roughly. Yeah. And a 200 pounds worth of VR. Yeah. But it'll be interesting to see the 800 pound console, if it has VR, with VR. Compared to a, uh, hopefully, Xbox of 600 pounds. Yeah. No VR, obviously. But at the same time, uh, there's no Kinect for this one. No. So this Xbox has its own price yeah. worry. Because the, pre the, the last one ha priced itself in with uh, having a whole, well extra peripheral yeah. for its pricing. So, 
yeah, could be could be a fun one to watch this space because let's be fair, it's it money is tight for a lot of people, and more so right now. Yeah, a lot uh, of people not having any work. Yeah, I mean, okay, obviously things are a bit up in the air with with what's going on at the moment, but is it the thing with consoles? And this is always the the argument: consoles are a luxury item. You know, they they're not a necessity, so you shouldn't be going into debt to own one, or two, or three. <laughs> You know, you you shouldn't have, you know, you shouldn't be paying interest on the money it costs to buy a console, uh, and that that I think is where my line is drawn. If I have to whack, whip out the credit card to buy a new PlayStation, or take a loan to buy a, you know, to get I don't know, get fucking credit from Shop Two or something to buy a new Xbox, then one doesn't come into this house because it's it's not the kind of thing you should be dicking around with your credit record for. So you're not going to get the uh, Xbox credit thing no. that they did. No, or, what, did, what did they fucking call it? Comes with, but you get um, Game Pass with it. Great. <laughs> you don't own the console for three years. No, <laughs> but you do get three years worth of Game Pass Ultimate. But I don't, I don't see an Xbox as a machine that requires that. And there no. is a there is a fine line for me, but like. My laptop or my tablet, things that I use every day for everyday things, these are things that I should be spending money on and, if necessary, whipping out the credit card to replace. Replacing, you know, or upgrading perfectly good consoles, you know, and doing it with an interest rate is not really acceptable for me. But that's just, I'm not preaching to anybody else. You do what you want to fucking do. I will not spend £800 on a console if all it is is a fucking console. I don't, yeah. You know, especially if I'm having to wonder, hmm, can I afford petrol this month now that I've done that? You can afford petrol this month because you're not driving anywhere. Well, true. At some point, I've got to get my car serviced. Gonna yes, get, it's going to be worse the longer it sits out there gathering fucking dust. Well, that's the thing is that you've got MOT and service. Is does that count as, uh, you know, necessary? Well, no, because my MOT is up at the end of this month, uh, and it it was due for its MOT last weekend. So obviously, because you get the month leeway. So. Yeah. But obviously all the garage is closed. And then the government announced that you now just get six extra months on your MOT. But the best bit, my tax thing turned up this week. Can't tax my car because technically my MOT runs out on the 28th of April. My tax will go from the 1st of May, at which point it will not have an MOT. So I need to wait until the 29th of April for the extra six months to clock onto my MOT before I can tax my car. Brilliant. Oh, it's, mate, it's, it's fucking ridiculous. It's everything that you could want and more out yeah. of <laughs> out of the world. Uh, anyways, back to games, mate. What have you been playing? So I'm going to start with uh, one that... It's, it's going to be a short one, because this is going to be talking about... So did you know that Gears 5 has had its third season? Uh, I saw the tile for it change to say something like, Campaign three, or season yeah. three, or something on the Game Pass interface, but that's all I know. So, this one is Gridiron. So, I uh, so yes, it's basically this one is the Coal Train expansion. Yeah. So, with is this, this one, single player or multiplayer? Multiplayer. Okay. Uh, it's also it's brought back canals. As a map, okay. Um, from the multiplayer, which you can also use in Horde, uh, and it's also brought out a couple of extra characters, including Cold Train. Nice to be used in Horde and Escape with his own little updates and such. So I'm going to talk about the new Gridiron multiplayer game mode. Now, it's not an easy one to. Uh, 
describe. So it's two teams of five, standard my player. Yep. There's a flag in the middle. Your objective is to get the flag and then take it to your opponent's end zone and stand there for five seconds holding the flag. Yeah. You know, gridiron, American football kind of combination type throwing in video games. Yeah. Meanwhile, your opponent's trying to do the same thing. Here's the kicker. You get one life. Oh. It's one and done. Game mode. There, the, the goal is that you take the, grab the flag, put it in the end zone, you get two points. You kill all of your opponents, you get two points. You are holding the flag at the end of the timer, you get one point. Okay. So it kind of works out. And it's first to 13 points wins. Right. Or whoever wins after four quarters of three. Yeah. So 12 rounds, basically. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So it's 12 rounds, and whoever's got the most points at the end of the 12 rounds or makes it to 13 first wins. Because you can't both reach 13. And. Um, essentially it's quite fun <laughs> it can be infuriating if you're playing with people who didn't actually read the fucking instructions at the start when it comes up saying if you're holding the flag at the end of the timer your team gets one point hmm. because I was playing with some people who were sitting waiting they, the other dude the guy on the other team had the flag it was two against one and they didn't try and kill him. They just sat there and let it happen, basically. Okay. And they lost because of it, and they couldn't understand why they lost. And I said, it literally tells you at the start, if you're holding the flag at the end, you win. And he complained, saying that just invites people to sit back and camp. Well, no, it's your mission to get the flag. Yeah. It doesn't matter. If you're holding the flag, you can do whatever the fuck you want with it. You can go and attack, or you can sit back and defend. One way or the other, both teams need to get the flag. Why were you sitting back and defending the nothing and when he wasn't moving forward? It was like the objective, it was only one left on the other team. What were you expecting him to do? Try and kill both of you? No. No one's that stupid to try and kill more than one person on gears when it's so easy to fucking trade kills with a shotgun. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, gridiron, fun. Pretty, pretty decent, I think. If you were to get yourself back into playing multiplayer again and Gears, because your Gears is your game, yeah, I think you would probably enjoy playing it a little bit. Okay. You say Gears um, is my game. I literally this afternoon installed Gears Ultimate Edition uh, to play with my brother. Nice. Uh, we were going to play World War Z the other day, because World War Z's just got cross-play uh, compatibility. Yeah. But actually, all it's got is cross-play matchmaking. Yeah. So I can't invite him into games. Well, that's not shit. Well, it's, it is shit because it was going to be fun, and I kind of I wanted us three to play it at some point, and I was going to invite him in so it can be like a proper four-player co-op thing because it's basically Left for Dead. Uh, so we were kind of talking about what we could and couldn't play, and I was like, "Oh, Gears Ultimate's got crossplay, and you've got it, and I've got it. Let's play that. So I'm going to be playing that tomorrow. So yeah, I'm quite looking forward to jumping back into Gears, and I fucking yeah. love Gears One. It's such a great game. Gears 5 has crossplay. I know it does. I've played it with him before. <laughs> but I yes. prefer one. <laughs> yeah. I think there was at least one point where I was playing on PC when you got you and yep. Lee, I think, were playing on the Xbox. Yeah, yeah. I don't even know why I was playing on PC. Because you were up north. Yes. I'm almost certain with... you were up north. And really shitty internet. Yeah. And couldn't figure out the controls. Yeah, I still can't. I've played it. I've since actually played because uh, I was doing some Horde and I was on my laptop at the time my Xbox wasn't on yeah. and I was playing with some friends and they were like uh, John just joined in we're just trying to finish this like Horde I was like fine F just literally changed the game on my P on my laptop from uh, Full Manager onto Gears and played with them for a bit and I was just like yeah this is too fucking hard to try and remember the fucking controls on this because <laughs> they're not well optimised no yeah. especially playing on a laptop Anyway, so that's my one of my kind of half games. Brooks, back to you. So I'll do my my last one and a bit games in one go because they're 
connected pretty much. So I to start with I, I finally finished Control which I, I'm pretty sure was Lee's game of the year last year. Yeah probably, sounds uh, about right. I'll get this out of the way straight away. I think if I'd have played it last year it would have been my number two last year behind Resi 2. Mm-hmm. It is phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. There are times when it is frustrating and really the combat the combat is great but there are times when you get into battles that are just such a fucking pain. Uh, and I did go into a couple where I was like shit I'm getting my ass handed to me. Uh, a lot of this I think was because there are well I tell you what let's start at the beginning. So Control for those that don't know is about a woman who walks into the Federal Bureau of Control, the FBC. The FBC is a department who are responsible for investigating uh, not quite paranormal. I think they call it paranatural phenomenon in uh, what well, in the world everywhere. They they just investigate it. So. We're talking basically these guys. I think I mentioned it before, and I briefly mentioned Control a few weeks ago. It, it basically oh. it's like being in an episode of the X Files or Fringe, where these people investigate weird goings on. Now they bring these weird goings on. They're usually centered around an item or an object or a person, and these items get shipped back to their headquarters in New York, called the Oldest House. I think, yep. Yeah. Uh, and then weird things start happening in the oldest house. Now you turn up at this headquarters and you start investigating things. You have a past, as you have to have, because it's a story and you have to unfold something. You are yeah. there to figure out your past and shit goes downhill real fucking quick. Uh you very quickly find yourself in the shoes of the director of the Federal Bureau of Control. And, yeah. With some very... I'm not going to ruin it for anybody. I do think anybody that even remotely likes a good story will love this fucking game because the story is phenomenal. And if you want to just walk around and look at things, so many weird things happen in this game. Uh... The main gist of it is, as you go on through this game, you kind of you encounter these strange uh, objects and things that have ha- that have been collected, and when you encounter them, they give you uh, power. So you know, no different to games like Infamous, where you you do something and all of a sudden you have another power. It's just a pretty typical video game trope. So you you move on and now you've got all these fucking powers. And the problem I had with the combat was I took like a two week break from playing Control and couldn't remember how to do any of the things <laughs> I needed to do to win the fights. Yep, that, that's pretty typical for most games that involve RPG elements like that. Yeah, so it, a lot of it is there are a lot of games you can kind of fight your way through, but the problem is with Control in its defence, and and I, I say this with nothing but positivity, it is built in such a way so that you need to use everything at your disposal to win. If you want to just walk in with your fucking shotgun and blow the shit out of everything, you can do it, but it will take you nine times as long as it should, and it will be frustratingly difficult. Whereas... If you take full advantage of the fact that by the end of the game you have the ability to levitate, you have a shield, you can power throw items, you can shoot, you can throw you know uh, bad guys' grenades back at them. You have to you have to take all of that into account to be able to win the fight. Well, some fights are a piece of piss. Some fights you'll walk in and just go shoot, throw, shoot, throw, shoot, throw, done. And it's a piece of cake. And then you walk into others, especially as you get towards the end of the game, that are just... They're so tough, or can be so tough, if you don't 
remember to use everything that you've got at your disposal. Uh, but I would say that control is easily, by the time the story wraps up, and it, it, I, I will not and cannot talk about it. It would ruin a lot, but it has easily one of my favourite video game moments from maybe the last five years in it. Uh, and me and Lee spoke about it briefly in our little chat group thing. Uh, but again, I won't, I won't ruin it because I think everybody should go in blind. I had no idea this was coming, and this thing happened, and I had the biggest, dumbest fucking grin on my face the entire way through. It was just this superb ten-minute section of game that made any frustrating moments beforehand just disappear. <laughs> I cannot recommend Control enough. You know, it's got some creepy bits in it. It's not scary. I lie. It made me jump once. And that's because I knew something was going to happen. And it's still done it anyway. And I was just half concentrating and it made me jump. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's... Although I say it's like X-Files and like Fringe. And it's kind of creepy and, and, and atmospheric. It's not scary. It's super weird, but the, the story is brilliant. Uh, yeah, it's one of the, one of the best video game stories I've come across in a while. Has, like I say, one of the best video game moments that I've had in quite a few years. It's it's near perfect as a game. High praise indeed. Oh, I fucking mate, I fucking loved it. Absolutely loved it. And now I got really excited when I found that they had DLC coming. I was like, oh yeah, I can get the DLC. When's it come out? And Lee was like, last week. I was like, shit, yeah. Oh, came out last week just for PlayStation. I have to wait until fucking June to play it on the Xbox. <laughs> Great. Uh, so that's... So I haven't done the clean-up or anything on Control. I just literally, I finished the game and I moved on uh, and went and played The Last of Us. But... I will play clean-up once the DLC comes Or once the first DLC comes out. I know there are two coming. But yeah, I mate, if you see this game going cheap, or if you've got nothing better to do with your time and a free space on your boomerang list, absolutely rent it, buy it, play it. It's fucking brilliant. So I've already have rented it from Boomerang in the past, and then sent it back because I hadn't touched it in about three weeks. Yeah, and I needed to move on to playing something else, and I needed to down. I needed another game. I think. And another game was more interesting to me than Control was, as much as Lee will hate me for saying that. I don't know if he can hate me more than he already does. Well, is that I possible? Mean, the, the thing is, <laughs> I... But it's, it's on my list again to come around. I, I remember looking at it going, that looks interesting. But it doesn't look interesting enough for me to to carve out time to play it. And it wasn't until uh, Lee wouldn't stop recommending it to us. I was like, okay, this, you know, obviously there's there's something to it. And then you kind of realise this is one of those games, like, the price isn't dropping anywhere. You know, it's currently on sale on the Xbox for 35 quid. Yep. You know, wow, this, this, isn't, this isn't a sale price. You know, 10 quid is a sale price. Yeah, so, you kind of look at it and go, hmm, alright. So I, I rented it from Boomerang. And then had points that I think it cost me 16 quid to buy it in the end. Nice. 16 quid well spent, mate, I'll be honest with you. It fucking great. So it got leaked to go into Game Pass and then confirmed going onto Game Pass by an executive. And then it got pulled afterwards. Yeah. But I'm guessing because the company that run Control, kind of, the, the publisher was like, well, fuck you guys for. Well, it's, you know, it's 505 doing games. This. Don't 505 games do... Sniper, no, Sniper Elite's Rebellion, isn't it? Yes. I don't remember. No, I think 505 publish... Oh, no, Rebellion self-published Sniper oh, It doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm sure 505 are usually all right with Microsoft. But I, maybe it, yeah, but if it might be something to do with this. Just, like, literally just take... Go, oh, yeah... Control is going on to Game Pass like in like four weeks' time. Yeah. That's proper. Well, no one's going to buy this game from us for a while. Yeah. 
was like everyone's just going to wait four weeks so fuck you guys we're not going to do it yeah uh, I mean it might have something to do with the upcoming DLC and the exclusivity deal they clearly have with Sony for something yeah that would be my only guess as to why it's no longer going on to Game Pass or not yet on Game Pass but at some point it will be on Game Pass and I will have probably already played it by then from Boomerang. Yeah. If I haven't finished it then it's on Game Pass and I can download it. Be, it's same, of... same as I've got I've got Quantum Break sitting on my Xbox. Yeah. It's been installed since I got Game Pass. Yeah. So it's, it's one of those games that when it comes out on Game Pass I'll look at it and go cool. Other people get to play it. I will never ever be sad about the fact that I spent money on that game. Never. It's it's worth every penny I spent on it. Cool. Uh, Good to know. And yeah, kind of. And from there, because I'd never played it before, and because I got a bit of a taste for their games. Obviously, it's a Remedy game, and Remedy made Quantum Break. So, and like you just said, Quantum Break's on Game Pass. I was like, ah, fuck it, I'll give it a shot. Why not? I'm I've been playing it for about half an hour, which is why it's my one and a bit games. But so far. I've wandered around, I've found connections in it to Alan Wake and Control, which was something that I didn't think was a thing, uh, obviously in conversation with other people since spotting it, uh, they have said that yes, it was confirmed that they are all part of the same universe, oh, Okay, I knew Control and Alan Wake were, but I thought Quantum Break was separate, anyway, uh, so yeah, Quantum Break is basically control just with time manipulation instead of you know you having the ability to fly <laughs> that's about all I've got out of it so far I haven't played much uh, I am really enjoying what I'm playing now the, the, the shooting is fun the you know the action is fun and again it's got a cool sounding story it's got a story that's right up my alley I'm quite looking forward to seeing what happens there it's a hundred and fifty gig of game. Yes, it is. That's because it got. I think it got a four um, K patch. Yeah. So and, it's it's, uh, it's a game it's... plus all the episodes because it was going to be it was going to have a TV show style tie in, wasn't it? Yes. Uh, which now just part of the game. I haven't even got to the first one yet. This is how little I've played it. Uh, yeah, but, full cinematics and everything. Yeah. But I am I am enjoying it. What I've played. I'm. I'm really liking it. I'm looking forward to seeing where it goes and if it compares to Control. Uh, for me, the only comparison I'm going to make, obviously, it will be story. That's all I care about. I, I have played super duper shitty games that have had great stories uh, and that's all I care about is a great story. So, we'll see. But yeah, that's my and a bit game, mate. The floor is all <laughs> yours. Okay, so... Uh, to carry on with your, well, to carry on with the whole go, playing a game and then not playing it and going back to it later on, and the game being much, much harder, because you don't really know what you're doing, and as a second side sidebar to what you said, where you need to go into a fight prepared to fight with everything that you've got, not just, well, one thing. Yeah. You, you can, it just makes it more difficult if you don't do it right. I'm going to talk about The Witcher 3, because I finished it. Nice. I finally finished the story, and I finished one of the DLCs. There's That's two. That's not bad going. Two DLCs, uh, but I opted to not bother finishing the second DLC before I finished the story, because I was getting to a point where I was just thinking, I need to finish the story and then go back around with New Game Plus, because the game is just getting to a point now where it's not giving me the amount of XP I need to be leveling up. Yeah. Uh, so I finished the main story and the Heart of Stone expansion, and on its own, the Heart ex- Heart of Stone expansion is not particularly long, and you can play it standalone. Um, I don't know if you can get. I know that the The Witcher Three is on Game Pass. I don't know if the two expansions are, so you would need to end up buying the expansions if you were to play it. Uh But the Heart of Stone expansion for a probably eight hours. Yep. Including most travel time, probably. 
you could do it in a in a in a day because I think I did mostly do it in a day. Plus, I also did a couple of other side quests while I was in the area to do stuff. But the Heart of Stone expansion alone is phenomenal. Yeah, like it's not often that a, a game releases an extra bit of story, and it actually be good. Like I've been, oh, I we've been spoiled in the in the past. Yeah. And then there was that big jump of, oh yeah, we're just going to release a load of DLC, charge through the nose, and it's also going to be fucking terrible. Like, did you play all of the Dead Rising 3's expansions? Yes, I did, because I bought the season pass and yes. played each one each other, you know, every other week as it came out, and they were all yeah. fucking shite. Yes, they were. Well, I, not... Well, well, the first one, one was okay. Of them was, well, the first one was okay. I will then, stand in defence... Of Dishonored, though, who have Death of the Outsider and the Witches of whatever they were called. Yeah. The the, the standalone expansions for Dishonored and Dishonored 2 were excellent. Yeah, and then there's, in the old past, of expansions being actual expansions and almost standalone games in their right, own right, yeah. with uh, Infamous having it. Yeah, with First Light and uh, uh, the Vampire one. Yes, and also Sleeping Dogs again, you know. Yeah. The Hong Kong Nightmare. I saw uh, that the other day on Game Pass. And I was like, I might install that and play it again. And I thought, <laughs> I'm not committing myself to another thirty hours of that game, man. I've platinumed it twice. I'm not doing it again. I don't know if I've platinumed it. I know I'm very close. You if did I on have... PS3 because you were an hour behind me. No, you platinumed it an hour ahead of me, but I actually done it two hours quicker. I don't know why I remember this, but I remember you sending me a screenshot of your time, and then when I platinumed mine, I sent you mine, and I was two hours faster than you. Uh, yeah, I remember now. <laughs> you platinumed... I, yeah. It, we both won that day. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then I platinumed the remaster on PS4 as well. I don't know if I platinumed the remaster because I had it on Xbox. And I don't know whether or not I bothered planning it, or whether or not I, or whether I just played it for fun. I think I might have just played it for fun. Yeah. I'd need to fire it back up again, but I think I'd also need to re-download it. Yeah. As good a game as it is, it's not worth the time me doing that. No, 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 it's not. It's a lot of fun, but no, because it's like thirty hours worth of shit that you got to do. <laughs> thirty hours worth of shit of a game where the most enjoyment I get out of it is running around the the. Uh, by the markets and having the bloke shout that I want a pork bun. Exactly. <laughs> Anyways, uh, sorry, mate. Uh, the Witcher. So, so the Witcher. Uh, if you do, but happen to be able to, just quickly grab hold of one or both of the DLCs, and even if you do just play the DLCs to just to sink your teeth into, give you that bit of extra lore because it will give you that bit of extra lore yeah. uh, while you've got the whole you know, lockdown. You're at home playing on your Xbox. I think you can get the complete Witcher collection for like 11 quid at the moment. Yeah. So I remember seeing, because I was, I was going to buy, because, well, The Witcher 3 is on Game Pass, yeah. so obviously I already had it. I saw that you could buy the expansions themselves, just the expansions, for like 14 quid. Yeah, and then I took a look for the uh, game of the year edition, which contained everything in the expansions. Was that, uh, yeah, and it was twelve quid or something. It was like twelve quid, so it was two pounds cheaper to buy that. So I was like, well, it's a no fucking brainer. So I bought that. Turns out the game of the year edition is its own separate download. Yes, I rem- I remember someone saying something similar with the disc version as well. So they couldn't load their disc. They couldn't load their original version game save into the Game of the Year edition disc version either. Yeah, so when you fire it up, it blatantly tells you, it says, we are searching for game data for The Witcher 3. Yeah. Just in case you happen to have it. And if you do, it then tells you, if you transfer this save, you will no longer be able to play The Witcher 3. Wow. Because you transfer the save to the Game of the Year edition and you can't knock it then backwards. So if you happen to fire up The Witcher 3 instead of the Game of the Year edition, yeah. it will not work. Love it. So it's 
it's its own problem and as someone who already had downloaded the witcher 3 and all of its fucking data glory to then picking up the game of the year edition realizing it's its own separate download downloading that and then just wait uninstalling the old version the original one to then play it it's a lot of content it was a lot of memory used on my xbox yeah and it's and the external drive i've got plugged into it was quite nice to uninstall one of them because you got a lot of data back obviously yeah but if they do make the expansions cheap if they're not cheap again and they're not for all the or whatever 100 percent play heart of stone just sink your teeth into it because it will give you a big chunk of information and you might end up really enjoying playing it enough to play some of the main story okay play the other dlc as well if necessary just to sink your teeth into it. But adding on to that, I also have since rewatched The Witcher TV show on Netflix, and everything makes a lot more sense now that I've got a bit more backstory. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't but, surprise me. Like, there's so many characters in there that I was just think, looking at it going, I don't know what the fuck's going on here. Or... The thing with the Witcher TV show, not to throw spoilers, is it's kind of difficult to follow based on the way that it runs through the story. Yeah. Just because there's three separate stories happening at once that yes, kind of it's meet together. Yeah, it's isn't it? Yeah, so it's... Yeah. Well, each individual story is linear. Yeah. But it's all, it's all meeting up to one, one crescendo point which doesn't really happen until the very last scene. No. So you've got eight episodes. Basically, you've got eight hours worth of TV where it's complete mindfuckery yeah. about what's going on and mentioning and, ta- and characters being in it at varying different ages. It's, it's a difficult one to watch, but at the same time, it's quite nice to have that backstory from having played the game and, and seeing the way that the game's played and the story of everything that's happened, characters, monsters, things that are just sort of mentioned. Uh, it's quite nice. Yeah. Just to have the backing to it. Uh, so, yeah, that's me telling people to play The Witcher 3 if you haven't already because it's a game from, like, 2015. And if you don't have the time to put it into a 40 to 60 hour story... The Heart of Stone expansion is absolutely phenomenal on its own right. Yeah. So definitely pick that up and play it because you can play it without having well, the actual. I, I game. have just checked while you were talking, and it's still currently ten pound forty nine in the sale for the complete edition. Yeah. That so a lot, a lot of the bonus content that's free. So like the appearance stuff. So you've got three appear, you've got an extra appearance for Siri, Yennefer, and Triss. I don't think I used any of them. Well, no, I put them all on to see what they looked like, and decided yeah. to go back for their original appearances because the alternate appearances just aren't very good. Well, actually, no, the Siri one's actually really cool. Fair enough. Um, but it doesn't really make enough sense to the story as to why she'd be wearing that compared to her actual attire. Uh, but there's also um, a alternate looks to some of the main Gwent cards, and yeah. they do look fucking spectacular. The alternate appearances, uh, and I actually had a fair amount of fun playing Gwent in the game. And I think I probably wasted as much time playing Gwent as I did fighting any monsters. Cool. <laughs> to the point where I've actually downloaded the Gwent game onto my phone and started playing it a little bit. Yeah. It's not quite the same, but. Gwent's fun for a trading card game. I shouldn't be getting addicted to digital trading card games. Well, you've got nothing better to do while you're in lockdown, why not? True. You're not wrong there, Brooks. Uh, so, yeah, The Witcher, good game. And it's got a story difficulty, which is actually still quite hard. Yeah, <laughs> that would definitely be what I play it on. Yeah, so play it on the story difficulty. You can't lose unless you act like a complete toolbox. That's basically how I live my life. Yeah, so typical. The thing that killed me the most was falling. Fair enough. So falling, 
looking at, at things and going, you know what, I could probably survive if I fell from that, and then jumping off it and dying. Or being at the top of some lad- uh, ladder and being like, well, I don't know how deep this is. Should I use the ladder? Nah, fuck it. Walk in the hole and then dying at the bottom and then having to <laughs> load back a save because there's no... The checkpoints in the game aren't brilliant. So you do need to pay a lot of attention to your manual saves plus the auto save. Yeah. Uh, but there is a bit of... that You can do... There is some save point abuse available to you. So if you don't really like how it's gone, you can, you know, still save point abuse yourself back. I think it runs on a three auto saves feature. So if the auto save catches you in a position where it's a complete tool and on a complete arse, because it does happen, a lot of games do have auto saves in really inconvenient places. Like yeah. I've, I had an auto save which trapped me in a cave with a load of level twenty eight enemies when I was twenty two level. Even on story difficulty, you don't survive that. <laughs> no. Um, so that was that was its own problem. So luckily, the autosave is good enough that it runs a three-set autosave that I could roll back to one previous to that rather than my most recent manual save, which was about four hours beforehand. So I was quite happy to not lose four hours worth of play and only lost about ten minutes. So, yeah, running a, a triple auto save, good feature, uh, and overall fun combat, fun story. It did take me a while to learn all of the RPG elements, which is its only flaw for someone like you to playing it is remembering to do the whole potions and decoctions and yeah. all of that and oils to put on your sword when you learn how to do it. But you can just run around and start setting fire to things, just because that's all you want to do. Nice. Because one of the signs is just setting fire to everything. Awesome. Uh, so that's that. And finally, I will go into the game that I've somehow managed to get myself a little bit addicted to. Uh, and that's Two Point Hospital. <laughs> I don't even know how I managed to get myself a little bit addicted to it. Because I think I randomly just started playing it on my Xbox for the sake of it. I think as I was just wanting something to do, it was installed. I was like, fuck it, I'm going to play it. I think it's because you kind of wanted to find out how good it was on console as well, how it played with the controller. Yeah. Uh, It plays really well with the controller uh, from what I've played of it on Xbox, uh, which is actually a fair amount, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, I've run through a couple of different hospitals, learning all of the stuff, learning, getting new developments, new stuff, new equipment, new training. Yeah. New hospitals, new everything. Working my way through it. Uh, it's easy to run due to the fact you've got the dual analog stick, so you can do everything you need to, plus zoom in and out with the left and right trigger. Makes yeah. makes the overall movement around the hospital easier, Yep. but you don't have the precision of a mouse click, Okay. which is its only flaw on console. Because, well, no, and menu navigation, but that's the same as every fucking console game. Yeah. Is as soon as you have more than one menu and you start having to press different buttons to open up different menus versus the mouse and click of just finding where it is that you want to click and clicking on it. Yeah. So See, there I are still I still take you know, having to cycle through menus with button clicks and that over the awful, awful decision to have uh a free roaming cursor in your menus like you have <sighs> with the last two Assassin's Creed games. God yes, no. Yeah, you know, I I can I understand the free moving cursor on console. It's a completely fucking ass backwards <laughs> idea because Black Ops Four had it. Yeah. Um, yes, it did, and it was terrible. It was also how I discovered that I had stick drift on one of my controllers. Nice. The same as any game that it's the only time you ever I ever notice having stick drift on any of my controllers is playing games that have a free standing cursor with thumbstick. Because you just see the cursor slowly moving across the screen. Yeah, it's not noticeable in games because that kind of dead zone motion just isn't noticed in any console game. Yeah, it's like so none of my characters are just walking around or forwards or side to side or anything like that. But a freestanding cursor it is noticeable. Um, so yes, there's no cursor one. It is menus of different 
different buttons, open up different menus. Yeah. There is something that I do kind of miss in the uh, the PC version because I've also been playing it on PC. Okay. Because after playing it on the console, enjoying it, and then being on my laptop more often than I am on my console at the moment because lockdownness. Yeah. Uh, yeah, playing it on on laptop is fun. Moving around the hospital is more difficult because you're using the mouse. So typical um, RTS mouse controls, we have to hold down a button to drag the map around. Yeah. Um, or you can use WASD, but it's a bit clunkier because it's not. It's digital. It's either on or off. Not. There's no smooth motion to it. Yeah. Are you um, uh, are you playing with an actual mouse or are you using your trackpad on your laptop? Uh, using an actual mouse. Oh. I was using the trackpad to start with, and got fed up with it, so yeah, I actually like dug out. I dug out one of my old mice that I could find. Yeah. Because I didn't have my awesome Corsair mouse sitting next to me, because it was uh, in otherwise in use. Um. So I had that. You know that makes it sound like you had it up your ass, right? Yeah, I'm aware. That's all right. Uh, no, my sister was using it because she doesn't like using the trackpad on her. Uh, she uses a surface for work. And seeing as she's at work. Yeah. Um, whereas I'm just messing around. Yeah. No, oh, fair enough. Uh, so it's its own. Uh, so playing on PC is fucking brilliant. Uh, has its bonuses. Has its better uh, well, it has better sides of it and has worse sides of it, like any fucking game, both on PlayStation, uh, both on PC and on console. Yeah. So uh, yeah, can I? I can recommend people to play it, both PC version and all on Game Pass because it is. Uh, so if you want to play it and download it, absolutely go for it. It is fun to play. Yeah, I've that is it's installed. On my Xbox, what was interesting actually, so we were in town a couple of weeks ago. Obviously, this is pretty locked down, uh, and we went into game because I always do if I'm in town, I always go into games, see if they got something on sale or something I fancy. Uh, and Nikita spotted like the cover for Two Point Hospital, and she said it looked fun because it does, it looks like it just looks cartoony. It's you know, when you judge a book by its cover and it looks like that, a kid's gonna love it. So I said I do want. I said I said I do want to play. It. I said, but sweetheart, it's thirty-five pound. I'm not paying thirty-five pound for it. Not, not for a game that requires a mouse. You know, I wouldn't buy Theme Hospital for a console either. You know, certainly not for thirty-five pound. Uh, a couple of days later, I'm on Game Pass and it it was there. I was like, all right, fuck it, I'll install it. So it's installed. I'm just I need to find time so me and Nikita are going to sit down and play it together. Uh, and by that I mean she's gonna watch me play it and tell me to do things. Yeah. Uh, but yes, yeah, the only reason I haven't played it yet is because I've just been trying to find time, find some time to sit down with the kid and have a go. I don't know where it sits in terms of um, free play, where yeah. you just kind of like because unlike um, City Skylines, you can enable infinite cash. Yeah. So you can just sit there and just fuck around with unlimited amount of money. You can't earn achievements when you do it that way, but no. I don't play City Skylines to earn achievements. I do it to do a city build, unlimited money, and yeah. just sit there and see what I can fucking do. And, okay. and trying to get the city to kind of run and then yeah. get frustrated because I can't get the balance of people moving in for living plus work plus agriculture and making yeah. sure people aren't going to hospital poisoned all the time and dying and not having enough places to bury the bodies. But I don't know what if this game has a, the equivalent unlimited money sandbox. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm not too fussed about that. I'll, I'll happily play the game and the you know play the missions and, the, and that and just yeah, sit and yeah. play it with the child. Yeah. yeah. So I've got, I've got a hospital where in order to get the three-star version of that or the three to get the complete third star because every hospital is run out of three stars where you've got three main objectives to do three store uh, three missions to complete for each hospital 
And the third part is to turn your hospital into one with a five million value. Okay. And your value can go up and down. Okay. I, I got the value of this hospital up to three point seven million. Nice. At one point. It's now only one point two. <laughs> because it went down rapidly because I could not and I couldn't stop it from doing it. Everything that I could think of to try and fix it just made it worse. And I was starting to get my and it got to a point where I was now spending more money than I was bringing in. Yeah. Every uh, yeah, so it got to a point where I was like getting getting close to bankruptcy and I was just looking at it going, "All right, I clearly need more equipment." So I went and found one of my older hospitals that was running um, and just did use that to do some extra research and development of some gear that I'd recently unlocked because I've got a new, I've got, you start a new hospital and it says, oh, you can do some new research now that you've accessed this hospital of things like DNA stuff or surgery and things. And you just go back to one of your older hospitals with all of the neat, neat and awesome upgrades and just go, well, I'm going to research these new things that I've unlocked now when I've won this hospital that's got a million in the bank on its own because I have that hospital now. Yeah. Where it's literally just sitting there, three star, level um, 16, I think it is, hospital. It's got a million in dollars in the bank, fully operational. I don't need to change or select anything or move stuff around. It's working perfectly without me having to interfere in any kind of way or capacity. And I could just do that for research. So that's the plan, is that I'm going to do that. I've opened up a new hospital where I've got two new uh, techniques to research. I'm going to go back into my old hospital, do the research there where it doesn't mean anything. Yeah. So then I can just go straight into it and not have to ex spend the time and effort and money into research in a hospital that I don't need to. Fair enough. So, yeah. I'm learning enough about this game to uh, to con now consider it I'm no longer doing it just for fun yeah <laughs> it's it's now become its own thing and that is always the interesting turning point that uh, that you find in games is that you're doing it for fun and then you kind of learn that extra bit about it and you kind of think this isn't just for fun anymore this is me trying to be competitive with myself yeah or I'm now trying to beat uh, hard difficulty Windows chess. Yeah, I, I like it when games do that because it it, it quite a. Uh, I get it a lot with story based games where I go, oh, I'm just gonna flick into this for a little bit, and then the story grabs you and you go, all right, I'm finishing this fucker. <laughs> yeah. Twice. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm gonna then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna see I'm gonna play it again and see what I missed the first time. I've done that not so much recently, but I've done that in the past with so many games. And I love it when you get to that point where like, you suddenly realise actually you're playing something that you're going to be playing for a long time. And you might as well fucking learn the rest of the information you need to. Yes. Like, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest, it was the same with The Witcher 3. I did. I was just playing it to run through the story and I was doing a lot, I was doing a lot of the side quests at the time. So when I was going through the acts, uh, Act 1 took fucking forever a good nearly 23, 25 hours into Act 1. Act 2 and 3 were short comparison because you can do almost the entirety of the game in Act 1, uh, side quest-wise. Yeah. And it actually tells you, before you complete half-ish way of Act 2... Okay. I don't know if it's... Or rather, before... like There's a point of no return in Act 2. Yeah where it actually says to you, some side quests won't be available after you cross this point. All right. Some side quests, not all of them, but that's because certain characters might die um, in the bit after that yeah. point of no return, because it's literally you come back, do something, some characters might be dead, so others might be not be dead, but at the same time, the, the game evolves as an environment because it's it treats it as you've gone to you you're doing this bit you're going away for a couple of years you come back the environment changes with it because it's a couple of years later so things won't be the same villages will be different 
some will be destroyed, others will be back to life after you've rescued them from whatever creatures or bandits are roaming around. Uh, and it's quite cool in that aspect. Similar to how you feel about Dishonored when you do your loads of killing and there's loads of rats all of a sudden. Playthroughs. Yeah. So it has its own environment that it kind of works towards. I mean, it's not as obvious as Dishonored because the way that you describe Dishonored, it's fucking everything about the game is the environment. Yeah. Whereas The Witcher isn't so much that, but yeah, when I discovered that even on story difficulty, just running around wailing on everything with a sword and hit and casting fire spells at it. Yeah. Okay, yeah, maybe I need to learn a bit more about this game. And that's when I discovered about oils for swords and different potions. Like, I was running into... Um, I, I was running into caves. I had no idea of what to do. I couldn't see anything. So I was running around trying to find lamps and lanterns on the sides and setting them on fire so I could light the way through the cave. Did Turns you out, light your sword on fire? No, no. Even better, you have a potion which gives you cat eyes, so you can see yeah. in the dark. Nice. I mean, to be fair, uh, witches already have cat eyes as part of the, one of their mutations, yeah. so their eyes look like cat's eyes. Or as one of the characters in uh, the Heart of Stone expansion calls you, puss peepers. Okay. Fair <laughs> enough. Yeah. Um... But there is a potion that activates your cat eyes so that you can see in the dark. Fair enough. Uh, but the potions only last for like an amount of time. But then you can upgrade those potions and they last longer. Yeah. And there's also upgrades that you can do to yourself to make potions last longer. But but if you of use there is. the it's a fucking yeah. enormous RPG. Yeah, but if you use the cat eyes and then go outside in the light. It does the same kind of... Basically, what it does is it makes it so that the darkness is lit up. So it essentially increases the brightness and contrast on your TV manually. Okay. Like, that's roughly what it's doing, is that... Yeah. You know how you, you go into a game when it's got, like, a really dark scene, so you turn the brightness up on your TV, and you, suddenly it's, you know, less scary. Yeah. Because the, there's no darkness whatsoever. There's no shadow. There's no... Uh, it essentially does that. So when you walk outside, you've got ridiculously high contrast and you're now in an area that's got loads of fucking white snow. You then need to go, okay, now I need to wait for the potion to wear off. And you take a look at how long it's got left. It's like two minutes. It's like, fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> so you're now just standing there waiting for two minutes for the fucking potion. Two minutes of real time, rather. Yeah. Or you can do the other obvious thing, which is to meditate. And then it'll just carry the time through while you meditate. And it'll be instantly. <laughs> but another really annoying thing that took me a while to learn is that meditating is actually really useful for you in uh, The Witcher. Because meditating essentially refills all of your potions, oils, bombs, everything. I thought you had to craft everything every time you wanted to use them. So I was like, crafted two bombs. And then use them. And I was like, oh shit, now I need to recraft them. And then I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't find them to craft them again. Yeah. I was like, where the fuck are they? They were really useful. Now I can't make any more of them. Turns out all you have to do is meditate and it then just and it instantly refills everything. So you need to craft everything once. Nice. And then providing you've got the alcohol, you can then recraft. So Yeah. A good game. Both of them. Can recommend both games. All games that I played actually. Awesome. Uh, so that's me done in terms of stuff so uh, hopefully before we record the next episode and I say hopefully uh, we'll have actually had a chance to play Doom Eternal so me, you and Doom Lee. Battle Mode would be good well to be fair myself and you are now no longer at work until Tuesday well, yeah but I still have a six year old you may have a six-year-old, but she has a bedtime. She does, but I also have a wife who doesn't play games. She also has a bedtime. This, see, this is where my problem <laughs> lies, right? Because I, I don't have a particularly big house. I don't have an office. I don't have a man cave. I have one big TV with yes. all of my entertainment stuff on. So after I get the kid to bed, I can play games, 
but it means sacrificing time with my wife and it means sacrificing time watching films which I fucking love doing you know it's a delicate delicate balancing act that usually means that games fall foul of me doing other things you know yeah uh, and I do kind of have to say to that like, I'm playing with my brother tomorrow night and I'm like, is it alright if I play games because I've already kicked her out of the living room so I can podcast She's out in the kitchen doing schoolwork. Right. Yeah, it's it's not like you can just kick her out to go to the cinema at the moment. No. So but, you know, it, it's 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 tough, and this is why I I I do. There are days, mate, where I sit there and go, "Why the fuck am I co-hosting a fucking video games podcast when I don't have time to put into Control, which in total took me about sixteen hours to finish over the space of two months." Yeah, you know. but then like the last week, I got lucky, and you know, because she's watched a lot of TV during the day, she doesn't want to watch TV in the evenings. So I can play The Last of Us, which is why I managed to finish The Last of Us in like four sittings. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's it's a balancing act that I regularly can't keep up. No, and I not asking you to make sacrifices to your life or your wife's life or your child's life. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it would be absolutely outstanding if we could get the Doom Eternal stuff well, no, we, pl- we will. played at some point because, I mean, we will. It's the promise that we've made to ourselves to try and get through an entire year of playing games together. It's, because it's only just... the 8th of April. We still have three weeks to go, technically, until we've failed April. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, but it is quite nice that we've got ourselves a point yeah. where it's okay. Yeah, cool. We've got time off work, and so does every other fucker in yeah. the world. Oh yeah, there'll there'll be some gameplay. Don't don't you worry about that. We will get Doom played for sure. <laughs> but yeah, no, like, but beginning of the year, before we actually, you know, done the uh, co-op challenge, the first thing I said to the wife was we're looking at doing this, it means that at some point every month there'll be a few nights in a row where I'm, I've got the TV. Is that all right? Yeah, because I'm taking... up. We've got TV in the bedroom, of course, and Sky and shit up there, so, you know, she doesn't have to be bored in the kitchen if she doesn't want to be, but at the same time, I'm taking up the room that has all the entertainment stuff in. But yeah, we will play some Doom, mate, don't you worry about that. Yeah, well, we will play Doom, hopefully before the next podcast, because otherwise it makes it awkward. Uh, But if we're not, then we've got Lee on for a double in the following month. Yeah. Swings and roundabouts. Yes. It's always nice to talk to Lee. It's always nice to play games with Lee, even though he hates me and he hurts me. Wow, you love it. It it is a weird uh, gaslighting relationship. It's quite an abusive relationship, yeah. Yeah, but I'm not going to phone up any of those. They've already got enough business at the moment. Yeah. From actual people with problems. <laughs> right, so, Brooks, that's uh, us done. Where can people locate you? Uh, Twitter. <laughs> and your house, because um, you're not allowed to leave. Uh, yeah, I'm in my house. Uh, <laughs> except for once a day when I'm out of my house for about an hour. But yeah, Run, uh, running in one direction and hoping that you make it all the way around the planet to get back to your house. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, I'm on Twitter. I'm at Brooker411. Come find me cool. on Twitter. Uh, I am uh, the John underscore CU on Twitter and Xbox Live. I am Long Tong Silver. Uh, if you are not interested in us as individuals, you have the Character Unlock podcast that you're listening to right now. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, also find us on Twitter and Facebook at Character Unlock. Cool. And that's us completely and utterly finished for this first fucking long ass motherfucking week of absolute mind numbing boredom of this stupid lockdown. You love it. <laughs> I can't wait to go back to work. It's terrible. <laughs> uh. Say goodnight, Brooks. Good night, buddy. Bye, everyone.